hypocrisy, hypocrites. And what he went by there, acting under an assumed character. That means you pray like somebody else. Oh, dear God, sweet heaven, heaven. Okay, now, he said, don't pray that way. That's, that's assuming another character or stage playing. Play actor of false hearted. Don't pray that way. Here's the outline. Don't pray that way. All right. Now, verse number six says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou have shut the door, pray to thy father which is in heaven, which, see, which seeth in secret, and shall reward thee what? Now, remember last week I told you all about the Talia, the, the Shah? That was here, the Shah. The Shah was the closet. You shut out the other folks. That's what they wore the Shah for. When they wanted to pray in secret, they put it over their head and over their face so nothing was distracting them. Mm. So he said, go into your closet. That was the closet there. If you look at it, that, that, that Greek word, closet, goes back to Shah, the prayer Shah. Mm. <laughs> so <clears throat> he said, don't pray to be seen. Don't pray to be seen. But be seen praying. All right, now, so you're not making a, a mockery out of prayer. That's what this outline prayer is telling you. So you go into your closet. Now watch what it says. In verse 6, it said, Pray, enter into thy closet, and when thou have shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which he is in secret shall reward thee what? Openly. Openly. So that means that there are times you don't need to pray out loud. You don't need to talk to God loud. Because when you talk to God loud a lot of time and the people hear what you're praying for, there are some folks who work against making sure that it don't come to pass. So if you pray in secret and God hear you in secret, he can answer you and we don't have all these interference. All right? Look at verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they shall be heard for their much speaking, for their good grammar, for putting words in on the other side of Jordan. When we get over there and we rise and we see the coattail of the, uh, my masters and I hold on to it hand and yeah, and, uh, well, I mean, anyway. You don't pray with those enticing words. Those, uh, you, know, uh, you, you, know, you know, when I get on the other side of Jordan, What's the need to go on the other side of Jordan you know, if you ain't got nothing, no business over there? You ain't never seen Jordan. <laughs> do you see what, do you, do you understand what he's saying? Use, use the same word over and over, again and again, and don't rattle out long prayers. Don't rattle out long prayers. All right? Now, this is what he's telling you. This is the outline he told him. Don't rattle off long prayers. Don't do it like the heathen do. Don't speak to be heard. Verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Before you ask him, God already knows what you need. So instead of praying your need. That's what Jesus is saying. Instead of praying your needs, pray and thank God that he already know what you need and he going to grant what you need without you telling them. So you always pray in the past tense as though it's already have happened. Father, I thank you that I am healed. E-D, healed, already, past tense. I thank you, God, that you are a healer. And I thank you, God, that you know every pain that I have. But don't go telling God about, Lord, you know I got arthritis and you know I got a tumor. And I he already knew it. So Jesus in his outline, he telling you how to do it. He said, your father, listen to what he said here. For they think that they should be heard by their much speaking. But he said, but not not you therefore, not be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father 
knoweth, continue to know what thing ye shall need are before you ask him. So he already know what you need before you ask him. So why tell him about you got a headache? Just thank God for healing the headache. With his stripes we are healed. They say you're going to be healed. You're already healed with the stripes. Verse 9. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our Father which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. God you are holy. You are holy. That's what hallowed be. You are sanctifying God's name. You are sanctifying God's name. You're not praying the wants and thoughts of the devil. Then you tell him, thou kingdom come, and thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. All right? What is his will in heaven? I, I, I would like for anybody to look it up and help me because I haven't been able to find it. But if you can find it, please help me so I, I, I will be able to preach this better. If you can find where there ever was a sick angel <laughs> that had to be healed, well, now, all right, the angels are where? Except the one he threw out there in heaven. Why aren't there any sick angels? Why aren't there no angels? If it's will going to be done in heaven as it is in earth, why are there no sick angels in heaven? On earth as it is in heaven. So in heaven, there's no sickness. So why then? There's the sickness on earth because we are not praying his will. We're not doing his will. Once we start doing his will, it'll operate on earth just like it is in heaven. And that's what Jesus was telling them. Here's the outline, boys. Here's the outline, fellas. Here's the outline, gentlemen. This is what I want you all to understand. Thou kingdom come. Thou kingdom ruleth over all. There's no kingdom that rules over nothing. That his kingdom ruleth over all. Psalms 19 and 20 or 20 and 19. Let's look at that real quick. 19 and 20, I believe it is. Psalms 19 and 20. Uh, 20 and 19. Let's look at that. 20 and 19. There's no 19. There's no 19. All right. Okay, 20. Look at chapter 20. Okay, we'll look at 19. I'm looking for where his kingdom. Let's, let God have established his kingdom. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 20. The Lord reward me according to my righteousness, for I have kept thee. He brought forth unto thee. Where we at here? 19. Seven, let's go. See, I gotta, now I got to find it. Let's look at 7 and 19. Devil don't want me to point it out to y'all now. 7 don't have a 19. Boy, y'all, he really, that's all right, we'll get it then. And his kingdom ruleth over all. Just somebody Google it real fast. Some of you Google folks. His kingdom ruleth over all. God have established his kingdom, and his kingdom ruleth over all. He established his kingdom in heaven. Y'all not that fast with Google? 103.19. See, is that it? Probably be it. 10319. The, the Lord had prepared his kingdom where? In the heavens. In the heavens. And what happened? And his all. kingdom ruleth over all. 103 and 19. Write that down. His kingdom ruleth over all. So when you're praying, thou king, thou will be done, thou king, let thou kingdom come. So if his kingdom come, what is it saying? It rules over all. It ruleth over all. And so in your prayer, you want to make sure that you get that established, that his kingdom ruleth over all. 
That's the outline he was giving us. All right? Verse, uh, verse number 11. Give us this day our what? Daily bread. Daily bread. And then he tells you how to make sure that the prayer works. Outline 12. Forgive us our what? As we do what? Now, if you don't forgive other people, guess what happened? So he's giving you the outline. If you want your prayers answered, you've got to forgive other people. Amen. And lead us not into what? But deliver us from what? Now, Lord, don't, God never led, led us into temptation. So King James Version actually mistranslated that. Because it wouldn't say he, God doesn't lead us into temptation. He don't. Let no man say when he's tempted, he's tempted of God. For God does not what? Huh? He don't, he don't tempt any man. But every man is tempted when? Let us not be put to the test, what it should be saying. The test of temptation. Allow me not to be put to the test of temptation, but rescue me from the evil one. That's the way the scripture should read in Hebrew. I mean, in the Greek. He said, and let us not be put to the test of temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. You see it? You got it? All right. And verse 14 says, for, well, let's finish. For thine is the kingdom. You are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For if you do what? Forgive men their trespasses. If you forgive men their trespasses, your father will what? Your heavenly father will also forgive you. Mm. But if you what? But if you forgive not men their trespasses. Mm -hmm. Trespasses. What happened? Neither. Neither. He won't forgive you. Now, that is an outline prayer. That's Jesus telling you how to really pray. The outline of how to pray. Now, we want to incorporate this in because this is what Jesus said. Now, everybody tell you how, you know, and, for, and I, was, I was misled that way too. How would everything else that Jesus said be God's word and then when it comes to that prayer, we tell folks they don't have to pray. They don't pray that no more. That prayer won't do it. No. And he gave you an outline how to do it. Yeah. And we say every word of God is what? Right. And we believe the Bible is the infallible what? Word of, word of God. The non-failing word of God. That's God's word is even in red to tell you that that's what Jesus said. And then we'll let the devil tell you, so that don't work now. But if that don't work, now the other work. Not another word. Now, the third one that you want to set the example for. Now, this is the outline prayer for getting to God, the things that you need. The first one was the prayer for asking God for something when you want to be delivered. And not delivered, when you want to be uh, uh, blessed. The, the first one was a prayer of blessing. This was an outline to how to pray to get to God's attention for anything. And this third one I'm going to give you is a prayer of deliverance. A prayer of deliverance. And guess where you're going to find it at? In a little book that only people talk about, but they don't really study it all together. It's a little book called Jonah. A little book called Jonah. We talk about it. Jonah chapter 2. Old chapter 2. <laughs> and this is a prayer for salvation. And what do the word salvation mean? Deliverance. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord. Now if you want to know why he was praying, let's go back up to verse 14 in chapter 1. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life. And lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, have done it please, we done it to please thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. So throwing Jonah into the sea, Cause these men to get saved. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish.
to swallow up Jonah. A lot of times folks say, well, the whale, they never said a whale, they said a great fish, a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And in the belly of the fish, three days, and he was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then chapter 2 comes in. And then it said, Jonah prayed. You see what he said? He prayed, right? Mm -hmm. He prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the what? Fish's belly. Now, here's what he said. And I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell. He heard me out of the belly of hell. I and thou heard, hear, hearest my voice. God heard him out of the belly of hell. That tells you there is no place that you can be that God don't hear you. That God don't hear you. That tells you also there is no creature or critters God can't speak to. He knows fish language, bird language, ebonics. He, <laughs> he knows all the languages. All right? Now, he said, for thou have cast me into the deep, in the midst of the sea, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves pass over me. I'm being protected, God, by you with a, in the belly of a whale where I should be dead, and I'm being protected by you. You're using a creature to protect me, and you're hearing my prayers while I'm in the creature's belly. That is awesome. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again towards my holy temple. Now watch this. Here, what did they get that from? Looking towards their holy temple. Who knows where they got that from? Solomon. When Solomon built the temple and Solomon dedicated, he told them, Lord, if we just look, don't care where we are, if we just look towards the temple, hear our prayers. Now, but here's a strange thing that uh, you all may not factor it in. How do you know which way to look for the temple in the belly of a whale? Oh, man, I'm about to ask that. <laughs> Ooh, just, man, I'm you. Unless, see, there's a lot of things not written that you, now, this is what theologians, mm. and, and I'm not a theologian. Mm -hmm. Unless the whale was pointed the way Jonah was looking towards the east and Jonah intuitively knew that he was going east and he prayed towards the temple. I don't take that. Don't write that down. I'm sure he did. <laughs> then I cast out of thy sight, yet I looked again towards thy holy temple. He said, I looked again towards your holy temple. I looked again towards your holy temple. The water compassed me about even the, to my soul. The death closed me round and about. The weed was wrapped around my head. I'm in this whale's, this, this fish belly, and the weeds wrapped around my head. And the reason they thought it was a whale, that's the biggest fish in the ocean that I know of. Now, I went down to the bottom of the mountain. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption of the, of the O oh, oh Lord, thou God. You brought me up. Even though I went down to the bottom of the ocean. Now, one of the things people say that that, that, that that fish were the first submarine. And one of the reasons that they, they, they related to the, to the uh, uh, whale is that the whale takes in air and shoots out air. So he was bringing air into the body where Jonah could live 
and putting, flushing it out. I don't know any other fish. A fish uh, drinks, a fish breathe, drinks water and breathe air. We breathe air and drink water. And so Jonah went to the bottom. The fish took him to the bottom of the ocean. And yet the weeds were wrapped around his head and he cried to God. Now, if Jonah was trying to run from God, he was trying to run from God. He wanted to get away from God. And isn't it strange? The person that he wanted to get away from, he's now calling on. <laughs> he was going another direction. He said, I'm not going down to Nineveh. Going a different direction. And now, he said, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. How many of you can say when you have did everything that you know, knew to do and things wouldn't get no better, you remembered God? Amen. You remembered God. I remember the Lord and my prayers came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. My prayers came to God. He heard me in his holy temple. Well, his holy temple is in heaven. But wherever God is, is heaven. Because he's always, he's ever present. So God was present with Jonah in the fish belly. And Jonah cried out. Now, here's some things that I, I wasn't able to figure out. And I'm asking God and, and and he gave me a revelation. Some things we have to ask God when we're reading scriptures for revelation. Yeah. Because here's a question. Who can answer me? How did Jonah know he went down to the bottom of the ocean and he inside a fish belly? Pressure. 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 So he was an aeronautic. <laughs> 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 How did he know he went to the bottom? All of that is speculation. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> but I believe, I believe that God gave him intuitive knowledge to know that the fish was at the bottom. He might have felt it when his nose, a fish went down his nose, hit it at the bottom, hit it in these shells, he was on, I don't know. How did he know? That is going to tell us. So how did he know he was at the bottom? The bottom of the fish, fish belly. belly. Okay. <laughs> the bottom of the fish belly. Possibility. He was in the bottom of the fish belly. He was in caves. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not doubting anything you said. And he could feel that he was, the fish had hit the rock bottom. Oh, oh, that's what you're saying, a metaphor. 